Guys, how we doing? This is gonna be part three of something that's been in the works for a long time, which is regarding the 1025R. I say part three because I've previously done a loader removal and installation video. Same thing with a mower deck, actually a couple of them. First one I did wasn't so great. Second one I think is pretty good. So we're gonna finish it out with the backhoe uh, removal and reinstallation. Give you some confidence. It's not a difficult process. You know, I'd say the backhoe of all three attachments is probably the most intimidating looking attachment to take on and off of the machine. But today we're gonna to be all the confidence in the world. Not only am I gonna do it, but the man behind the camera is gonna do it as well. And he's a newbie. Guys, real quick minute here. I wanna tell you I am sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you need a stability solution for your tractor, tipping over, getting tippy side to side, look to Bora, they have great solutions from one inch to six inches wide, aluminum or steel. You order direct from Bora, but American made, you're gonna to wanna to check them out. Hey, and do me a favor, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe down below, and head on over to goodworkstractors.com. All right, let's get to that backhoe. Okay, so we're gonna go through the instructions that are plastered right on the backhoe itself. Gonna give you the quick run through up front. We are gonna do the full gamut later on, so if you don't see what you're looking for, the, the nitty gritty detail in the beginning, check it out towards the end of the video, we'll go through that as well. Okay, so we're basically done. We're gonna disconnect the hydraulics really quick, but I wanted to point out that you can see the bucket. These teeth were flat on the ground to start out with, and after we got done with everything, the bucket's a bit of an angle right now, so maybe adjust this angle a little bit, uh, depending on your conditions. I'm not gonna worry about it for, for this example here right now, but you could also, while those hydraulics are still connected, you know, depending on how much you care about the surface that it's on, probably rotate that bucket a little bit and get it flatter as well. Okay, so this is a pro tip for you guys, whether you have this backhoe or maybe you have a different one, different brand, bigger one, smaller one. 
it is very important to connect and not just plug off these hoses because this is going to complete the hydraulic circuit that's feeding your three-point hitch system and so you will not be able to raise and lower that three-point hitch unless you complete this hydraulic circuit and let that flow pass through okay so at this point the backhoe is completely detached mechanically hydraulically from the tractor so i'm going to drive it away i'm going to mount the three-point arms going to take them back off and put the backhoe back on just to show you the whole process Okay guys, so now we're back in traditional three-point mode. Normally there's gonna be a, a steel ring or a hook that comes down, you can rest this in. I happen to break mine off, no big deal. I actually run a Spico, a three-point quick hitch on here all the time anyways, so check it out if you want the Spico, the only quick hitch that does not use bushings. We ship them all over the country. Now we're gonna go ahead, reverse the process, take the three-point arms back off, put the back hoe back on. The last opportunity for my brother behind the camera to figure out what's going on here before he gives it a try for the first time. And quick reminder, the instructions to do this are plain as day, right on the back hoe makes it super easy to do. putting the back hoe back on. The biggest thing you need to do to start out and be successful is come in nice and square so you're aligned perfectly with where those pins need to seat. Real quick plug for you John Deere owners. You see a lot of really cool accessories all over this tractor. A lot of them come from MUDS Customs, including a grab handle for the, uh, the top of the back hoe to help you get on and off the machine, grab handles for the loader, mirror bracket extensions, steps to climb up on your tractor as well, even tie down points, and guess what? You can also get custom backhoe buckets if you want a narrow trenching bucket or a wide scoop bucket, all sorts of stuff they make. Accessories are coming for other tractor manufacturers as well. The best part is you order from mudscustoms.com, you use code GWT and you're gonna save 5% off of your order. There we go. There we go. So we did notice one piece of confusing terminology. It's gonna be step eight on the installation process. It says to lower the stabilizers in order to get the pins to go down into the little groove that they're supposed to rest in. Well, you actually need to raise up those stabilizers and kind of take them off the ground. Doing so is going to lower the rest of the backhoe, including those pins, so that they can kind of drop down into those little um, slots they're gonna rest in.
All right, guys, so that is the entire removal and reinstallation process, including the three-point arms. Honestly, I think it's a marvel of engineering. It's a really well-designed system, not only in operation, but the ability to attach and reattach to take on and off. To be able to switch from a three-point to your backhoe and back, back and forth is pretty incredible. Just how quickly and easily you can do it. Okay, so now it's time to trade positions. Let the man behind the camera, my brother Chris, give it a shot. He has never done this before. He had a chance to take a look at me doing it here, and so we're gonna see how it goes. It's really not that difficult. Let's see if the proof is in the pudding. All right, it's my turn, and we're just gonna start the timer. There's no one to race against. Courtney didn't time it, but curious to see how long it takes me. Um, I'm just gonna follow the instructions. Okay, so that is officially detached and ready for storage. I just want to make sure the last thing, yeah, that's everything. So for a complete newbie, that took well, actually, it took a little longer than I thought. Eight minutes, thirty seconds. Yeah, first time doing that. There's not much that would go much faster. It's just like, I don't even know which controls went which way. Did the um, instruction seem to make sense? Instruction made sense. Obviously it helps that I was familiar with instruction since we just went through the process together. But that's the point of these videos, right? Yeah, so if you watched it, you'd be just as familiar. Well, some of these things though, like those hydraulic quick couplers, I mean, they can just be problematic from time to time, whether you're a newbie or a pro. Yeah. Uh, and that probably ended up eating up a minute of that eight and a half minutes, if not 90 seconds. So we're going to go through the install instructions now. I don't know that it's worth me pulling the tractor forward to re-square it up. The point is you would just get it square. And um, yeah, let's just go into it. Eight, eight minutes, 40 seconds. Wow. So we did actually have to square the tractor up again. Yeah. Um, that was the same amount of time even doing that. Yeah. Wow, so, that's so. pretty good. Well, part of that's those hydraulics, easy to disconnect and reconnect. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't waste any time there. So I'm a newbie, and the grand total time it took me to unhook and hook this up was 17 minutes. And... Uh, I'd say that's worth it if you got a project to do eight and a half minutes, not a big deal. All right, Courtney, we'll turn it back over to you. Alrighty guys, so there you have it. You saw me do it, you saw my brother do it, you saw how easy it is to do. Now, I can't speak for every other manufacturer out there. I know Kubota has a really good system that's somewhat similar to this. Um, those attachment points, those pins on top are actually probably a little bit easier in their latest design, but this is not challenging by any stretch of the imagination. I'm happy, I think this is gonna give you some good help. Slow down, watch it a couple times if you need to, or if you're having trouble, or if you haven't hooked yours up in six months or a year, you're gonna figure it out. And if you're lucky enough to have one of these bad boys, make sure you watch the video on how to remove and reinstall your front end loader and your belly mower as well. Hey, so it would really help the video out if you would give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right underneath the video and head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.